Should I upgrade to Windows 8.1 instead of Windows 10? So with so many people still running Windows 7 and with Windows 7 coming to its end of uh, extended support here at the beginning of next year, the question a lot of people are asking is what should I do next? And the thinking behind this question is simply that since 8.1 is quote unquote closer to Windows 7, does that mean it's less of a jump, less of a jarring impact to make the switch from 7 to 8.1 than it might be to go to Windows 10 directly? The answer, as they say, might surprise you. Should I upgrade to Windows 8.1 instead of Windows 10? As Windows 8.1 is between Windows 7 and Windows 10, it's tempting to think it's a less jarring change. It's not. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Question. After reading the most recent article about Windows 7 support updates ending in 2020, what are your thoughts about moving from Windows 7 to Windows 8.1 versus switching to Windows 10? I've been very content with Windows 7, even more so than with Windows XP, but my adult daughter told me several years ago that I might not be happy with Windows 10 and should remain where I'm at. My strong recommendation is that if you switch, switch to Windows 10. There are several reasons, not the least of which is often referred to as the informal every other version rule for Windows. XP good, Vista bad, 7 good. There's a strong sense in the industry that every good Windows release is followed by one worth skipping. It even predates Windows XP. Windows 98 was solid. Windows ME, not so much. Windows XP was stellar. Windows Vista had problems. Windows 7, as you've seen, is popular, perhaps Microsoft's most popular OS before now, and Windows 8, and by extension 8.1, had some serious issues. In each case, the issues I refer to aren't technical as much as inherent in the design changes implemented in the less than stellar version. Vista, for example, introduced user account control, which annoyed the heck out of many people. Windows 7 dialed that back to a less obnoxious and more manageable interface. Windows 8 introduced the tiled start menu, which, well, once again, annoyed the heck out of many people. Windows 10 dialed that back to a more sensible and usable interface. There are more issues, but those are the two that stand out. Switching to 10 is easier than 8. In my opinion, a switch to Windows 8.1 is at least as jarring as the switch to Windows 10 would be. Indeed, given that some of what changed in Windows 8.1, like the tiled start menu, was undone or dialed back in Windows 10, my sense is that the jump from 7 to 8.1 is actually a more difficult change than from 7 to 10. If the magnitude of the change you're facing is an important determining factor, then my money's on jumping directly from Windows 7 to Windows 10. There's also support to consider. Windows 10 will be supported longer. Windows 8.1 is already out of mainstream support, which ended in 2018. Extended support for security fixes only lasts through January of 2023. Windows 10 is a little different, as each feature release is supported for at least 18 months. Additional releases are made every six months or so, which in turn resets the clock theoretically for as long as your machine is capable of taking the updates. In case the support dates change, which has happened, you can keep abreast of them at Microsoft's Windows Lifecycle Fact Sheet. Getting Windows 10 or staying with Windows 7? As I understand it, there are still techniques to get Windows 10 for free, as long as you have a prior version of Windows or a prior version's product key. Alternately, you can, as the original Windows 7 support article outlines, stay with Windows 7 as long as you're secure in your own ability to stay safe. I recommend the update to 10, however. For links related to this article or to leave a comment, visit askleo.com slash 77270. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.